Hello, everybody, and welcome to. Uh, I'm going to take a guess, right? 38. 38. It's, I'm 38. It, it seems like. <laughs> That's getting old. I'm 58. 58. Okay. Well, we just set down the camera from whatever bull crap we were talking about a minute ago. And on to the next. And we came up with another project to share here. What are you doing? What's that? It's a work book now. Yeah, I see that. It was made in 1969, and it made it this far. It goes into that Phantom Gun game Williams made. Yeah. Yeah, this is the sound. That thrilling card. piece of coin op equipment. Yeah. Ugh. This is a sound card. And um, when you're reconditioning one of these older things, you want to check values of certain things. Okay. Like resistors, and uh, you want to check for cold solder joints because that happens a lot on this stuff because of age. Yeah. Um, and the reason for it is. Um, yeah, the, the metal deteriorates. Dissimilar metals yeah. don't want to stay bonded to each other. Dissimilar metals also don't want to contact with each other either. Yeah, they don't like that. Aluminum Magnetism. against steel, you're going to get a white powder because steel is actually going to win. <laughs> and it will actually generate electrolysis or if moisture gets in between the two and it will deteriorate the aluminum, turn into a white powder. Uh, rust is a form of degeneration when you put different steel against other steel. Or when you drive my truck. Yeah. Stainless Rust. steel does deteriorate on its own. Uh, you, whenever you combine different metals together, they don't want to touch each other. They have to be the same. Well, when you're soldering copper to lead to zinc, which is usually what the um, yeah connecting Good. Okay, the materials. The, yeah, yeah. The connecting uh, posts are, uh, then you get this. Uh, that's a really obvious example of a cold solder joint. In fact, it's so cold that the board is turning black because the component that has the cold joint on it is a 5 watt power resistor and you can see it's making the board hot black. Yeah, it's hot, yeah. It, it, it's not happy that it cannot work. Plus, in the day when these old circuit boards were made, they really didn't have too much figured out as far as making something work efficiently. These are waste, wasteful products. To make this do what it does takes far more energy than it should. Yeah. Uh, they're using dropping resistors to, to drop current for components. Wrong way you to know, do things. Three watt. Yeah, look at this. A one ohm power resistor. One, it might as well be a piece of wire. One, zero is a piece <laughs> of wire. Plus they put the things right tight to the board. It's like, can you pull it any tighter to the board? Yeah. That thing gets hot. That's cement. It's ceramic. Same thing with this. That's it got hot because of the cold joint, but before the cold joint, it's right next to the board. You want to stand them off a little bit, yeah, um, because these get hot. That's a five watt. Now today's components are much more efficient. Um, what year did you say this was? 71, 72. So it's real early electronics, right? Oh, this is a 60s machine. 69, yeah. Um, here is a. 5 ohm 5 watt. This is what a 5 watt looks like nowadays. And it's you can see it's way smaller. A lot smaller. Yeah, and it probably dissipates more than that. Um, you know, today's components are definitely more efficient in material design, much superior than what was available here. Uh, so when you're replacing things, you're going to probably like these 1035 electrolytics. Yes. Today's version of that is going to be, and here you see I have like several hundred. These drawers, some of them have two values yeah. in but I have several hundred. We've covered that crap before in the yeah. It's All Crap video. Right. Now, a thousand at 35 would be here. This is what a thousand at 35 looks like today. Those are, uh, that's a 50. Where is my thousand thirty? That said, the one you were just in says thousand thirty-five. Yeah, but these are um, axials. Or yeah. not axials. These are um, the one above it. I want axials. Well, 
That's a thousand and fifty. Thousand and thirty-five. These are radials. Yeah. I want axial. Not what you want. Yes, I don't have axial. On. I'll probably go up in value, but you can see that the same value is um, tiny. <laughs> it's tiny. Yeah. yeah. Today's materials <coughs> are. Uh, and these are all very large ones here. To get up into this size, you actually have to go into. Uh, yeah. This is a 15,000 at 16, and it's still smaller in diameter, the same length. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So what are you going to do? When you're rebuilding one of the cards, you want to first clean the edge connector. I like using a fiberglass brush. Pencil eraser is too slow, doesn't do enough. Okay. This is made by EIS in New York, and this is $35. Wow. Uh, for the pen, and then the refill goes in it. Which is this, is okay, well, cheap. the homeowner's not going to do this then. What are they going to use to clean it? Pencil eraser. Okay. It will, it will take longer and it won't, won't look as nice. Okay. But yeah, uh, if you use sandpaper, um, just be aware that it's coated. The traces are sprayed on in the newer components. These older ones, they're thicker though. You can yeah, feel you can get away with it on so that. So you can get away with it like 600 sandpaper. But on your new stuff like pins, don't do it. You waste the whole trace, or you'll make it so thin it won't work anymore. So you really want to watch when you're doing that kind of thing. Then you want to go over your solder joints, some of the big, big ones. Go over. Yeah, remove old solder. <laughs> if you have a desoldering station, use it. Yeah, I think we actually covered this in It's All Crap. You were there. Right. Remember? Yeah. So you don't just hit hit, hit it with a solder pencil. And build up new. No. You don't just leave what's here and pile new on. Because underneath that, it'll still do this. Only you won't be able to see it. That'll yeah. really be tricky. You remove it, put new on. I'll be right back. I'm going to run down the store. Okay. It's all crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you have a potentiometer like this, it's nice to uh, help it work. By so back to where we just back to where we, where we just were. Are you going to uh, physically re remove all of the solder on that board and replace it all? Am I going to do every joint? No. Uh -huh. no. Okay, I didn't think so. No, I'm going to do the ones that have the service points that I'm dealing with, which is the electrolytic capacitors. Okay, whatever you're replacing. Yeah, and some of the power resistors. Okay. Yeah. And I'll inspect the other ones. Right. This is tuna wash. If you have a um, potentiometer yes. that controls volume or voltage or it's any other thing. It's dusty dirty in there. Yeah, you want to uh, use some... Uh, this is tuna wash. This is like 50 bucks a can. This is not cheap. This stuff is very thin. I tried that on stink bugs. It did not work. <laughs> you didn't try any of that on stink bugs. <laughs> that stuff's expensive. This will clean the inside of the pot. Yes. And make it not scratchy anymore. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, <coughs> I do have new potentiometers in case I need them. It's a volume. They're, they're okay. still made. Um, but that's a repair part, not a maintenance part, generally. Right. I mean, there's a fine line sometimes. You, you can't, you know. Uh, yeah, when you do this job, you do what you normally find uh, wrong with older circuitry, and then you try it, test it, and see, and see if you, you got a problem. Yeah, and then come back. You, you won't always do all this work and then go and put it in, and it works. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Uh, but in this case, this board worked before we took it out, which is a good thing. It did work. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not going to introduce a problem. I'm not sure the sounds it was making yeah. were right, but I don't think I've ever heard that game. Yeah, neither has anybody. And if, <laughs> and if they have, they forgot what it sounded like by now. It says it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay, well you said you wanted to get this in the game and um, yeah, let's, you, you had this big plan of what you were going to do. Uh, I want to go put, I'm going to recon and, this. And you're right? going to do it before the hardware store closes, <laughs> which is at six. Right. And it's now for something. It is? Yeah. It's 317. Okay. So get the wrenching and tell me what you're doing while you're doing it. Okay. 
thousand and thirty-five. Since I don't have the value, you'll put some sort of overkill in there. Yeah, I'll put something uh, better. I'm gonna go with thirteens at fifty. What these do is they filter uh, noise out, so a little bit more value in microfarads is is better. Okay. Voltage is never a bad thing to go up in from factory. You can increase if you have a room for it. And in this case, you're always going from old to new. It'll do the same thing, it just has capability. It's got a bigger buffer over top. Yeah, you don't want to go too much higher in filtering because it takes too long to charge that up when it's activated as a circuit. Okay. And it's too hard on the components if you go ridiculously high. But you want to stay close to it within a certain percentage. Most of these, <clears throat> since this was not a medical device, since this was a yeah, game, tolerances were the tolerances huge. were twenty percent plus or minus. Yeah, uh, hell, this might even be right where they are anyway. <laughs> um, I do have a cap check on my uh, multimeter, but I, I, I generally am not fascinated with with checking the old stuff. No, that's uh, forty years old. What you do want to pay attention to, since these old boards have no markings at all, none, zero. Do not put one of these in backwards. It would be bad. Okay. When you turn the circuit on, if you put an electrolytic in backwards, the cap flies off. Well, that they sounds blow like up fun. and then all the paper comes out. Oh. It, it uh, sounds like a firecracker. Cool. And then it stinks. I've heard caps blow up on machines before. <laughs> yeah, okay. Snap! What the hell was that? These, these it sounded are, like the electrical if blow up. If you're going to intentionally blow one up, these are not <laughs> the ones you want to do. You want to do a nice big... Yeah, you want to do one of these. Oh, you got something good? Yeah, the radio ones are the ones you want to blow up because the top comes right off. Cool. These don't really go anywhere because the wire holds no, them. Not as exciting, huh? No. Okay. Plug one of these into the wall. <laughs> these are really fun. All right, well, we can do that later with a used one. I don't think people believe you, Ray. Yeah, well, I don't really. <laughs> I guess I need to get up off of my ass. Ugh. What's this piece of junk down here? That's Ed Dockerty's um, shuffle National board. Shuffleboard. Backbox. It's an old head unit? Yeah, it's a two-way. It's got the same artwork on the other side. It okay. mounts in the center of the game. Yeah. So each end of the 22-foot shuffleboard can see that. Okay, and he gave it to you to fix? Uh, yeah, he gave it to me to fix. It has some problems in it and um, when he bought the shuffleboard he didn't get the little push button wooden boxes with it um, there is a box at each end with two buttons on it okay and all they do is advance the score oh yeah triggers of some sort okay so I'm, I'm supposed not very to, advanced stuff right now I'm supposed to fix that and then make the boxes up and then wire it in oh, okay that sounds like friggin' work. Yeah, that's a large, <laughs> large undertaking. He has the hardware. Oh, another friggin' huge project. Nothing's ever easy. They're always friggin' huge projects. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's been here for some time. Yeah, I'm sure it has. Most people don't have this part with the shuffleboards. In the day, in the 50s, there were two shuffleboard companies in the U.S. And that was it. Okay. There was National and American. And uh, National... One of them was in Philly, and the other was in New York, New Jersey, and I forget which one it was, but um, those were the only two shuffleboard companies. And there was only one length made, 22-foot period. Yeah. I'm a little surprised at how often I'm asked for a shuffle. Yeah, I know. Not not a shuffle, not a puck bowler. I know. I mean, I've been I, there most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> what? Do you, do you have shuffleboard? <clears throat> really? What? You're standing next to a row of pins. And, and I got ski balls sitting there and all this other stuff and they're asking for a shuffle with you know which is I don't get it I think they just do that I, yeah well yeah if we had that they'd come in and they'd ask for a pac-man or something yeah and then something. when we didn't have the ski ball they asked for a ski ball yeah and then well yeah I mean we did okay on that but yeah all right you're yapping again you should be working is that done yet no Can you do this in under five minutes? 
Who wants to know? Have you heard about his TV show? No. Yeah. You ain't missing nothing. I do know you like bad TV though, so if you're really seeking out some to. some bad TV, go watch that crap. <laughs> All he did was rehash his old shit. He, he say, like it would be like us delving back into our old videos, right? And me just repackaging them and, and chopping them up and sticking them in, sticking them together, and calling it a TV show. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's painful. So, does this mean you're gonna watch this? N no, I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm not going to watch this either. I'll watch this once to make sure that it's okay to post, and then off I, off I go. <laughs> but I got to tell you, this is more interesting than whatever the hell he's putting out. This has the big tip on it. Yeah. There's three sizes of tips. Um, you want to taper the tip to what you're doing so that you concentrate the heat on the small pin area. You wouldn't use the big tip on a circuit board like an IC. We, you... we covered your solder sucker in its entirety in Did the... Did we really? In It's All Crap when I found out that you have another one of those for the shop and it's, it's only it's like a thousand dollar unit. It's down the floor there. And I was thinking of all kinds of crazy thoughts. Well, I wanted to do work in the shop. Yes, right? I know. I still sort of want to do it. I, I don't want to give up on that. I, I didn't put up a major argument. I just kept it to myself. As I'm still doing, see? Didn't say nothing wrong. Didn't you? No. Oh. I just said I felt some sort of way. And I didn't have to, I didn't explain it. I left it kind of open. So it's about 40 degrees outside, Ray. That's an improvement, I think. Are you guessing? Yeah. The digital thermometer right there, what's it say? It says less than that. No, it's I'm close. It says 46. 46, and then what is it in here? Uh, 31. 72.3. 72 in here, yes. That's nice. Nothing to complain about there. 46 is a massive improvement over where we've been. It's been crazy, Ray. I sent John pictures of the snow, and I told him we got all of the snow, and you know what he <laughs> sends me back? What's that, a, a, a land lizard? No, he sent me back, well it's been 85 the last nine days in a row here. Yeah. So I'm thinking that... <clears throat> I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, you're thinking it sucks around here. I, I don't know, I wouldn't live here if I didn't like it. Okay. I like the Four Seasons. What? There's no perfect place to live, although the weather and the air temperature is nicer out there. But what about mold? Yeah. Yeah. I watched a special on that area out there, Arizona. Yeah. And you might think it's nice uh, weather-wise and everything else compared to where you're at, or or at all. But take Maybe a look. Not so much. No, yeah, take a look at some of the things that are going on out there. Insects, fire ants, them killer bees. Cool. They love it out there because they never die. They get big. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> it doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> Plus, the heat is relentless. It's too much. John said that there's car finishes fade in the year. Two, yeah, two sure. years. You done that yet? No. I hear you talking about Arizona and shit. Well, you asked about the And I got Jimmy picking on me for leading you off track. Leading me off track. And I'm sorry, I gotta keep talking, otherwise this will be a film and it'll be like one of them silent movies. You remember silent movies? You went uh, to them when you were in high school. No, man. What, what, what is off track? What, what do you mean? Huh? What did I do? <laughs> I'm off track with Jimmy? No, you're off track when you ain't working. You're, st you're sitting here telling me about Arizona. You're asking about that. Yeah, well I need you to keep working. That's all. And I was explaining why I keep talking, because otherwise it's going to be a silent movie like you used to go to when you were in high school. Doesn't that sound boring, like if we just watched you work and there was no sound? Okay, so the board was hot, but... 300 ohm at 5 watts. 
board was pretty hot, but it doesn't look like there's any major damage there, right? Right no, up? It's no, okay? It's just been hot. It's not like burnt through or anything. You ever notice? But you don't have you have everything except for what you need? Uh yeah. I got three thirties, two seventies. Resistors you really don't want to go up or down because they're... Yeah, they're doing a specific job. Yeah, and if you look, they actually made the trouble to go 5% on that. That's, that. For 1969, that was probably an expensive part. Oh, because of the tolerance? 5% tolerance, yeah. Most of this stuff's only 20. Let's see what it reads. Yeah, you're reading, you're reading too much into it, Ray. They, they, they didn't do that on purpose. That's what was, got a deal. It was, what was laying on the shelf. <laughs> Can we, will that fit in there? Yeah, yeah that in use there. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I am. Hmm. <laughs> 310. 310 it's damn what? Damn near right on. 310 ohms of yeah. resistance. Yeah. And what's it rated at? 300. Okay, what's well, in? It's intolerance. Really not bad. Put it back in. It's a shame it's so short. Especially since you cut it off. I didn't cut it off. Oh. I just pulled it out to read it. I couldn't read the value. You're not going to put that back in there, are you? Well, I don't have another one, Mike. I have three thirties. Uh, ten. Well, there you go. This is an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, that ain't that ain't going to work. <clears throat> Shit. 270 at 3 watt. That's a 5 watt. I'd have to work. That's in it. that's intolerance, Ray. What? Um, either or. Well, 3 watt is underneath 5 watts though, you know what I mean? All right. You'd want to go up. Okay. okay. Don't have anything. What a no. Shit. Imagine that. Another snag in the job. That's ridiculous, Ray. You got snagged on an electronic freaking well, of course, I guess you don't stock every damn thing that goes in a 60s gun game. No. What the hell? This stuff represents video. Yeah, that's what you use. Of the air, 70s, um, 80s, 90s. Pinball, 70s, 80s, 90s. And jukeboxes, 70s, 80s, 90s. And mega touches. Yeah. Um, 2000, whatever. Not gun games. So, yeah, no. The, the stuff doesn't go back to <laughs> 60s. this is very unique here 60s gun game parts what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a 300 ohm 5 watt <clears throat> a couple of them and then I'd like to stand it off the board for there yeah okay well that hit a snag damn it now what well I'm gonna go on and do the rest of the electrolytics okay I think these are AC caps Yes, they are. And I have very limited AC caps because that's a jukebox. Part. Okay, yeah, you're not going to have that either. Well, I'm not sure that they really need replaced, but I would if I had them. But I can do these two more electrolytics here. And then we can see where we stand on it when we go over. Well, we don't stand any different because <clears throat> um, it worked when it worked before. It might make it sound different if these are off value. Okay, I got no interest in that, right? The job's, he's not picking that up anytime soon, so we can wait for it to be right. Oh, there's the uh, resistor, because I don't want to put that back on there. It's yeah. too tight. Let's see what this uh, reads. Nothing. 1693. What is it? It's a thousand, so it's off quite a bit. Oh, it's got it's has increased resistance. Yeah, and it's starting to go bad. That's the one that came out. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of the electrolytics. It's not even near a thousand. It's almost double. Sorry, I tuned out on you there for a minute because this electronic stuff is way over my head. Let me see what these look like. Plus, plus goes down. This is supposed to be a hundred and fifty. That ain't bad. One thirty-six. Yeah. And a hundred and fifty. I have hundred and sixty-threes. 
150. No. I guess I'll go with 163. <clears throat> Don't really want that. Well, it's on the same joint anyway. All good? Mm -hmm. This is kind of boring. Did I show you the video of the model review thing? Photo yeah, show? I like that. Yeah. It's getting <coughs> moderate to slightly below moderate attention. I can't shock him anymore, Ray. I've already done it all. I can say it sucks, and that doesn't really affect anybody. They don't even notice anymore. They don't even care. No. Either. Jimmy and I got permanently banned from uh, Pinside, but that's not news either. That's old. Did uh, does that mean like a lot? Yeah, that means that means that I'm I, I got to spend the first ten minutes of every day crying. It's a trick name. Pin side. Does that like mean pin inside? Pin side. Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask one of the wonderful moderators they have over there. Whose sole job is that? Is like a librarian? Yeah. Librarian. Well, no. What they do is they they um, interfere in your thread, and they spout off their own opinion, uh, but they're above reproach. You can't say anything about them, or you get banned forever from Pinsight. Is it a private domain? Yeah, uh, I guess it's a Nazi camp. It is public, but is it privately? Well, yeah, probably. Oh no, didn't care to look into it. I thought freedom of speech was applicable not, through everything. Yeah, not there. <clears throat> All right. Aerovox. There's a neat name from the 60s. Cool, look at that. Even the, the lettering's neat. Well, don't throw that out. I'll sell that on eBay. That's a 0.15 microfarad at 200 volts DC. You got that? Yeah. These are banded like they're marked for polarity, but they're not. Um, I really don't know why they did that, because these are, they matter, and they're dimpled and labeled. AC caps are not. Because uh, there is no direction. There is no, because it's AC. It's yeah, one way, it's going both ways. Yeah, yeah, it does go both ways. So, These are filter caps that filter AC. They're used in jukeboxes a lot. You won't find them in any solid state device. Um, it's just not a type of circuit Don't practice have that's used, no. Uh, because most of your modern day electronics don't use AC anywhere in the circuit. It converts to DC everywhere. Okay. There is no AC in most of them circuits on electronic circuit boards. And most of it is either 12 or 5 volts, actually. Except power component. Um, avenues, which are whatever they are, 50, you know, 175 volts, whatever. But you won't see this. And uh, I have a drawer full. <clears throat> and these are what the modern day version of those look like. Okay, you got if a little conversion chart here. Yeah, yeah uh, this is 0.15 microfarad. So what it looks like here is 0.1. Uh, they don't even really have that value, but this is what the modern-day marking would be. This is what you see. Okay. Um, so this is a case of you take the closest to, closest shot at it. Right. You know, and this one's 0 0.05. And 0 0.05 isn't on here either. 
0.047 and it's 472k. Point, point oh, oh, 0.005? Or no, sorry, yeah, 0 0.05 would be here. It would be 473k. Yeah. And that would be the marking on the new one. And these are AC caps. This is what they look like today. They're still made for certain things. They have a really high voltage rating because most of the circuits they go in get near these volts. 200 volts, yeah. Like jukeboxes. Yeah. They won't shock you, though. <laughs> you ever get shocked? You got shocked. No, I watched you. Um, Damn. The thing pick, was off. Pick man. up and, yeah, the amp was sitting on the floor, been sitting out for a while, and that thing sent you for a ride. That hurt. I don't like it. When he plugged into the damn machine, just a part sitting on the floor. <laughs> thing got you, man. That wasn't you, nice. Glad you sold all those things. Yeah. This is a uh, ceramic cap, disc cap. Yeah. This is the same value as that. Okay, what are you going to do? Well, since I have to order... You're going to order all the right shit? Yeah, I'll order those three. I'll look at the other one. I don't have either of these two values down there. This one here is .047. Yeah, that's a match. So I think we had that, didn't we? Well, it was on the chart anyway. .047, yeah, it's 473K, so I do have that, if I have it in here. Yeah, there it is, 473K. Okay. So that is um, 630 volt rating. This is 200, so it's overkill, but it'll it'll work fine. Okay. So I can use that. So I'll order the other two values, and I'll order this value, and then these here things are one ohm. Why would you even bother? I don't know. That's a whole lot of nothing, isn't it? Yeah, one ohm. That's might as well be a piece. Might of as well not be there. I don't know. I I follow what you're saying. Those those two blocks there do nearly nothing. No, well, and obviously they don't uh, get hot because there there are there's nothing those. They don't do anything. It's, it's connecting something. It might as well be a trace. You know, one point four ohms. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's uh yeah. I'd like to check just to see if they're open. Okay, well they're all right. So they you're gonna leave them alone, aren't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, they obviously don't have any uh, kind of current because yeah, they're, they're, they're not like this. This thing here, I, that disturbs me. That, that that really was burning up. Yeah, well keep in mind this thing's 50 years old, right? It should look a little burned up. Yeah. I'm gonna replace this one. There's some transistors on here, but I don't think getting into that is necessary as a maintenance item. Sound cards generally uh, have failures at the capacitor. Uh, generally, or, or that's the only failure they ever have? Yeah, and if they don't work, then there could be a, a component issue, but I thought, I heard somewhere that all you have to do to fix anything is replace the caps. I don't know where I heard that. In an audio device, it's where, where you start. It's not going to fix it. If it's broken, we'll fix it. Yeah. Um, it's a maintenance issue. It's a deterioration failure. Yeah, this, this is going to sound probably different or better than it did. Um, I don't think it's really, it didn't have any tonal quality. It just had a beep or a, ch a screen like thing. Yeah, yeah. Some of these maybe had speech in the later years, uh, like gangbusters. You, know, you had a tape deck and you had an audio amplifier board making it reproduce the tape, which had speech. And if you don't replace maintenance parts like this, then you could have um, you know, poor sound quality. But this here, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, well, we're way behind schedule today, Ray. I'll go to the store. They're closed already. Are they? Probably. I they closed at 6. Yeah, it's not 6 yet? Dude. It's 
42. Sun's going down because the temperature's going down. You lost a half degree. The sun don't go down until 5.30. All right, well, it looks like you've explained all you're going to do there. Um, I have no idea how long this is. What did we, what did we show here? Um, we talked about that crap. Yeah, we just showed uh, completing the repair on the gun game. Yeah. In a matter of... Specialty. We showed that these things from the 60s have parts that you don't generally stock, and we got stuck. Yeah, and... That's fine. I'll order yeah, the right stuff. That's normal. Um, I mean, when was the last time you did a Phantom gun? I never did one. Yeah, exactly. You so want to order the right stuff. You don't want to just substitute for something that's crazy, because uh, then then you get what's wrong with all of it. Then it's uh, yeah, you're the next hacker in line then. Yes. So that's, that's what I'll do. I'll order three components and then this should be complete. Okay, well that's all I'm going to give them for this, for this round then, Ray. So I need you to tell me about a bad movie that you've seen re recently. A uh, bad movie? Yeah, you've got uh, a minute. A minute okay. review of a bad movie. I can't review it. I just caught the end of the one. But review the ending. I was watching RoboCop 3. Yeah, well that's, you know what that's about. Oh, I spit on your grave. <laughs> okay. That was bad. Yeah. Everybody, remember, Ray has finally seen I Spit on Your Grave. He's a little behind the curve on that. And it said it's a cult classic, and I'm thinking. That's why what? I'm saying you're behind the curve, because everybody's seen that, Ray. No, I never saw it. And I thought, wow, that's weird. I caught the last half of it. <laughs> it was really weird. Oh, well, you got to see the whole thing then. And I thought I saw all them wacko movies. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, fairly common, commonly known one. Really? Yeah. I ain't never heard of it. Well, you know how many movies I see, and I remember that like it was yesterday. Wow. Well, I watched that, half of that. that was okay, how'd you feel after that? Terribly weird. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I was waiting for the credits so I could see who made it and who was directing it and this and that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's. No, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't. I, I can't confirm I or like deny that. I like movies like that, though. Sort of, they're weird, like Tarantino movies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that was it. I was watching The Last Resort. Uh, it's not even worth reviewing. It was pretty bad. Last Resort? Yeah. Oh. I don't even know what channel it was on, but it was bad. I generally watch Encore. And, and your recommended Lady Killers came on, and I couldn't stand that it. That was funny. That's I funny. Couldn't, I couldn't stand it I long know, enough I, to I'm laugh surprised. at it. I'm surprised. That was funny. Did you watch the whole thing? For some reason, Tom Tom Hanks' character just annoyed me instantly. Oh. I did not like his character. Yeah. Um, and that's all I was able to focus on, and then I turned it off. Oh. There were so much funny parts in there with all them guys. Okay. Well, maybe I'll try it again sometime when I'm in a different mood. Did How far did you get to see the... Um I don't know. I was working on other stuff. I just looked up and I caught the guy's character and I oh. thought, this guy's a douche. He's like some southern gentleman or some shit. It's yeah. terrible. He's a scam artist. And he got scammed at the end. <laughs> That's the funny part. It's an ironic thing right up to the end. Okay. But in between it's funny. I like that Wayans guy. <laughs> did, did you see the part about the donut? Hi-ho donut? <laughs> no. Or, at the beginning of the movie, after they go through the uh, old lady going to the police department complaining, then they go to how Tom Hanks, that guy, or whatever his character is, recruited these guys out of the newspaper ad to assemble a band of uh, criminals to dig underground to get in to steal the money out of the... Okay. Right? And it showed him the interviews of each person that he got. It showed where they came from during their normal day life job you know, and, and what they're doing for him now. And it was funny, that donut. <laughs> These two guys hold up the donut place, and the Japanese or whatever that guy is, I guess he might be Korean or something. They don't speak English. And these, these guys are trying to hold up the donut, and they don't understand what, what they're saying. And the ladies are, oh, you're white. Uh-oh. It was funny. 
Oh. They have guns. They're held, holding guns on them. Give me the donut money. <laughs> Give me that donut money. Looks like you enjoyed it, right? I'm glad to see that. Yeah. It's better than it. shoveling snow. Jean saw it and she didn't get it. She yeah, I think she was probably it. with me on that yeah, one. She, if you asked her, she says, I don't know. It ain't funny. There's a lot of funny parts in it, but you got to give it a chance. Yeah, you don't got to. Well, you don't. I still watch it over and over. It's a funny movie. Okay, well, tell these people one more thing. Well, one more thing is we're going over the store. If Mike yeah, can not yeah. That chair. Well, one more one more thing is he's like he's on the camera, but one, I think he's in one more thing is like a closing a closing statement closing or something. Statement That'd be one these. one more thing. Yep, we'll see you next week, next time uh, when we again take control of your TV set. What are, what are you doing? Space Odyssey? I don't uh, know what the hell Twilight. is that. Uh, yeah. No, it's Outer Limits. I never heard of that. Really? Yeah. All right, I'll sign off, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go over the outer limits. Now. Okay, make the timing of it right. Say, hey, that would be a good say goodbye. Say goodbye. Yeah, outer limits pin. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> so, say goodbye and wave, and then. All right. Yeah. See you next week.